So I've never done a video like this before, but I thought it'd be interesting because I'm trying to be better about watching movies outside of movies for the channel. So I'm trying to get better at that. It's really hard for me to do so for some reason, but I've decided to just throw on a movie that I just see on a streaming service, just watch it and just enjoy it for the vibes, for the views. So with that, hi. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you've never been here before. So today I'm going to be talking about all the movies that I watched in January and February. I just wanted to combine them because I didn't get around to doing one of these types of videos for January. So I figured I'd throw that into this February video because there's a lot of movies that I watched that were really freaking good. I won't go too into depth about these movies or their plot, just little bites of my thoughts and opinions of these movies. So if you haven't already done so and you want to see what kind of movies I'm watching, I put them all on Letterboxd. I will put the link for that in the description. It will always be in the description. It's just underwater YouTube YT. So go ahead and check it out. See what kind of movies I'm watching. So we're going to be starting off with January. Now on January 2nd, I watched three movies. The first one being The First Purge. And I hated this movie. <laughs> this movie was so confusing. I don't really know what was going on. I gave this one and a half stars. It's not good. So the first Purge movie, not the movie, the first Purge, the first Purge movie was pretty good. I mean, the concept, you know, it's a little dystopian, whatever. And so I was like, okay, I can get into this maybe. And then the more movies in this Purge franchise that I watched, the more I hated it. I don't know why. It just got super goofy and kooky. And this one specifically, it's like the people, the decisions that they were making were so dumb all the time. There were so many like random aspects added into this that were so unnecessary or confusing. Again, maybe I just like wasn't paying attention or something, but I was so confused watching this movie. And I didn't really connect with the characters at all. I didn't really care about anything that really happened to them. They tried really hard to make you feel for the characters, but then they would just make some dumbass decisions and I'd be like, okay, well, I can't help you there, buddy. This movie was honestly kind of frustrating to watch. I was kind of just waiting for it to be over. It felt super long because of that. Then on the same day, pretty much right after I watched Ma, this is the one with Octavia Spencer. And I thought that it was pretty good. The ending was kind of weird. I guess we were kind of building up to that point of her kind of going off the rails and doing something like kind of crazy. Her act really weirded me out and I get the whole movie is like she's supposed to really weird you out like that's the whole point but I almost felt like too much because these were like underage kids you know they weren't like college kids or anything like that these were all high schoolers and she was like obsessed with like these high schoolers and it's like I get it she has a terrible like sad backstory for like her high school life and she wants to like relive that basically but some things that she did I'll just say made me like really uncomfortable I just would prefer not to see stuff like that you know I was watching it and I was like these are high schoolers it made me a little comfy but all in all I thought it was pretty good pretty decent enough I don't know if I would re-watch it per se I might recommend it to people but it that's really neither here nor there it's really dependent on like the type of person I recommend this movie too. I gave this movie three stars. So pretty average rating. It was good, but honestly not my favorite. And then after that, like immediately after that, I watched No One Will Save You. This movie is crazy. Literally crazy. This movie is so unique because there's no talking in it at all. And you would think that that would frustrate you. I kind of like it because I thought that this was so unique. Alien kind of invasion. I think it got a little trippy and at certain points I was like, where are they going with this? It was a little confusing, but I liked it. I kind of liked where it went. I think I kind of understood what they were trying to do or what it was trying to be at the end. I don't know. It was 
her kind of like going back in time or like telling herself something or something with her mom. I don't know. I'd probably have to like read more about it, but I'm interested enough to do the research. If I'm not interested in a movie and I'm watching it and I hate it, plus I have to do research about what I just watched, that's no good. But if I like a movie, if I like how it was executed, like this one, and I thought the acting was great. I mean, it's really hard to act in a silent movie pretty much, but if it's executed well, and the intrigue for me is there, like the story is good, Alien Invasion, then me researching it afterwards is fine. You know, I'm not gonna be frustrated about that. So I actually gave this one four stars. I could see myself bumping it up if I read a little bit more about this and kind of understood a little bit of like what happened. I think you're not really supposed to know too much about like what happens, but I think that this was kind of a better version of what Don't Worry Darling was trying to be. And this movie had no talking. So just take with that what you will. All right, the next day, January 3rd, I watched May, December. Now I was just so curious about this movie because I would read the descriptions and I'd be like, what is this movie about? For some reason, every website likes to just describe movies now as like what people's reviews are. So it doesn't really give you a plot. A lot of descriptions for movies now would be like a tantalizing tale about lust and desire. And I'm like, so what is the plot? Like, what is it about though? So I was curious and I did not really like this movie. It was so long and I was kind of like, what is the moral of the story here? Because the whole plot is about this like small town drama that became kind of like viral or whatever of this mom cheating on her husband with like a 12 year old or like a 14 year old, super weird. And they're still together. Like she divorced her husband for this like 14 year old and they're still together. So the whole plot is about that. And like, they're making a movie about that and Natalie Portman is you know the person the actress portraying this mom so she goes to see the mom and get her side of the story basically but it basically just also turns Natalie like like the whole moral of the story is like Natalie Portman at the very end is like you know what maybe she was on to something and I'm like huh that was the end of this movie it was so long again this movie also had just like random characters random people I was just like oh my god and of course the whole time I'm feeling bad for the kid I mean he's not 14 at the time like it's years later later after this he's like I don't know supposed to be like in his 20s at this point when they're making this movie but I just felt so bad for him hearing him talk maybe this is weird that we're together and you seduced me or whatever when I was 14 and we got together when I was 14 and it's kind of sad to watch him talk about all this with that I nothing really comes of that he's just like okay whatever bye and then like kind of leaves I don't know it was really weird I didn't really like it um I gave this two and a half stars only because visually it was good and I liked the score <laughs> The score was good visually. It was very pleasing to look at because it was really beautifully shot, but that's pretty much where it ends because the plot is garbage. <laughs> okay, and then the next day, I watched Saltburn <laughs> and I gave it five stars. <laughs> I am seeing so many things about Saltburn. Like I, I was seeing so many things. So I was like, you know what? It, it was on Prime too. So I was like, I'm just gonna watch it and see what happens. My gosh, I was, I didn't even know what Saltburn was about. I didn't. I thought it was kind of like a call me by your name-esque type of movie, but like not with the cannibal man in there. And so I was like, hey, I'm intrigued. Let's go ahead and let's watch this. And I did not expect pretty much anything that happened in this movie. There are a lot of things that people are freaking out about, but a lot of scenes that people are freaking out about, for some reason, those scenes did not disturb me. I was not grossed out or like, okay, this is too far. I mean, I don't know. I kind of just understood why this character was doing all these things. I mean, of course, when everything gets revealed at the end, then everything really just like makes sense. I was like, hey, that's why he's doing all these things, but he's still hurt and loves Felix, I think is his name. I was like, I get why he's doing all these things. Even when he's like, so like the bathtub scene, the grave scene, I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. Like he's obsessed with this guy, I understand. And it didn't disturb me for some reason. <laughs> I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, this is happening. All right. And everything getting revealed at the end, I was not expecting that. I truly wasn't. Yeah, 
I gave this five stars a 10 out of 10. I loved it. This was such a beautifully shot movie. The soundtrack is so good. Like I definitely added some of the score to my playlist. The acting, amazing. Barry Keoghan. Oh my gosh, I love him. And also there's rumors that he's dating Sabrina Carpenter, who I love. So yes, yes, yes. Yes, I loved this movie. I get why a lot of people would not like this movie because it goes there, you know, the Degrassi saying, it goes there. It really does, but I don't know, it really worked for me. It really did. I'm kind of surprised I liked this movie so much. This would not seem like a movie that I would like. I loved it. One more, what more can I say about it? All right, what more can I say? 10 out of 10. All right, then on the 5th, so right after that, the next day, I watched Wonka. Now, I did a little YouTube short about my review of Wonka so I won't go too into detail. I originally gave it three stars and then I changed my rating to a two and a half because there are just a lot of things I didn't really particularly care for in this movie and it was a little too kooky and like animated and not in a way that I like. With that what really brought the score down for me was that the girl's name was Noodle and I don't know why. She saw her necklace was an N and she was like, oh, my name has to start with an N. Let's go with Noodle. And I'm like, out of all of the N names you could pick, you pick Noodle. Whatever happened to Natalie? <laughs> Whatever happened to Naomi? Why Noodle? It was so weird. So that honestly brought me down because I was like, I can't take you seriously when you're walking around with a name like Noodle and we're calling you Noodle. And Willy Wonka is saying like, oh, hi, Noodle. How's your day, Noodle? And there's like a heartfelt song and he's saying Noodle. I'm like, this is no who's this movie for is it for kids because i can't oh my gosh sorry that was just so frustrating but you can watch my review about that um i made a youtube short about that and then lastly on the 18th i watched self-reliance i also made a youtube short reviewing this movie this is a movie directed written and starring jake johnson i won't go too into detail about this one but i felt like this movie had so much potential because jake johnson is such a funny actor and it really fell flat of the humor, which really surprised me. I would thought this movie was gonna be really funny because it also has Anna Kendrick, who I think is pretty funny. That Anna Kendrick and Jake Johnson, who are both really funny actors, and it really wasn't. I mean, maybe that's on me. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be funny, but you can tell it was supposed to be funny. I don't think this movie made me laugh at all, and it was really sad, but I liked the concept of this. So I gave this three and a half stars because, again, I felt like the potential was there, and I think maybe Jake Johnson's time was like too occupied with other things. He should have either just been the director, just been the writer, or just been starring in it because there was a lot that could have happened but it just didn't and it was kind of disappointing honestly so those are all the movies I watched in January now let's talk about all the movies I watched in February I, I watched nine movies in February because I was really chasing the thrill of experiencing my first time watching Triangle I wanted to experience something like that again because that movie was so good I was just thinking about that movie so much for some reason in the beginning of February and I wanted to experience it and I got these movie suggestions from Possessed by Horror and she said these movies are kind of like Triangle so I was like okay let's see what this is about. So one of the first movies that she really 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 suggests is like Triangle and I watched this on the first was Brightwood and I did not like this movie at all. This was kind of like Triangle and like the loop sense of like oh there's a loop and whatever future power past present self is all there at the same time but in triangle there'll be a part where she's like walking around and she's like hey stop that person's running i'm gonna go chase them she chases the person and then the story progresses and then she is actually the person that's chasing and then her past self is like hey you know what i mean it's like the same story with Brightwood, it's not even the same story. It's like they're hiking in, you know, the forest. They're on a running trail and they get kind of confused and they get lost and they hear something later on when they become the people that are making the noise that past selves hear. It's like not the same reaction. It's a different story. It's different outcome. So I'm like, what is supposed to be happening here? If it's supposed to be a loop, why isn't the same thing happening? You know what I mean? Anyways, I didn't really particularly like this one because of that. 
I gave this one two stars. And also the girl in this movie was so rude and mean that it, it made this movie like unwatchable. She was so mean. This is supposed to be her boyfriend that she's with. She has never said a nice thing to this boyfriend. I don't know what the premise is, why she's being so mean to him, but it was honestly excessive. And at a certain point I was like, okay, we get it. You want to break up with your boyfriend, whatever. But she was being so god awful mean to him that I was like, you're unbearable. I can't even watch this movie because you're being so mean and it just felt so long mainly because of that girl I just did not really like her and I was like god I have to keep watching this movie and she's in the whole movie she's a main character but on that note right after that I watched Coherence and I loved it now this one is actually very very similar to Triangle exactly how I described Triangle past self interacts with your future self the loop continues blah blah, blah. that is this movie this movie is so good and it kind of inspired me to maybe make a list or make a video about dinner party movies where it's like just one setting and everyone's at the dinner party and the dinner party just like becomes chaotic and like shit goes down because that's the premise of this movie is they're at this dinner party little things start happening and again all their actions actually end up being like the future selves of them and it's just a continuous loop and it never ends and I loved it I gave this one four stars because this is a movie I would rewatch there's like little parts Parts of this movie too that just make it more and more crazy they really describe everything that's going on which I love I'm the type of person that likes everything laid out for me and they really do so and they tell you what's happening basically and you can see it too and I think it actually really did come together very well at the end which that's what I need for the loop movies you know the ending needs to be like that's exactly how the movie started oh my god that's how this movie was <laughs> and I loved it four stars this was great I would definitely rewatch this one and recommend it okay so next on the 8th I watched Society of the Snow this was crazy so I watched watched it and I knew the story of this. I didn't really know, I don't know, the extent of it, the cannibalism part of it. That shit was crazy. This movie was just so well done. I gave this five stars because I thought this was such a well executed movie. Literally my worst nightmare. The fact that they survived, a decent amount of them survived and were able to find their way out just like climbing mountains and they're like, I hope I stumble upon someone or a village like not even knowing if they're gonna get rescued. Oh, Oh my gosh. And then, oh my gosh. I, I mean, I want to say I don't want to spoil it because there's one part that was so good. My heart literally dropped when I watched that and I don't want to spoil it, but like this is based on a true story and this happened so long ago. So I don't know. You just, you just got to watch this. This is good. This is a 10 out of 10. Okay. So next on the 23rd, I watched It Lives Inside. Now this one was pretty interesting. I wanted to watch it when it first came out. I think this one also just really confused me. So this is kind of like like a boogeyman but like in the Indian culture. I think they needed to explain it a little bit more. I mean I tried I was rewinding. I was pausing. I was doing a lot trying to figure out the lore of this thing. I think it looked cool. This monster or whatever. I think it looked cool visually. I didn't really understand his plan like what he was trying to do his motive I guess I don't know I don't really know what the lore was for it I think it had to do with embracing your culture this girl was kind of just like a typical teenage girl and she was kind of rejecting her culture a little bit and I think she was like kind of getting punished for that I don't know I don't know and it ended kind of weird too I gave this three stars because again I think visually the monster looked really cool but I was just a little confused maybe that's a me thing which is why I still gave it three stars because three stars to me is a pretty good rating and I'm also kind of obsessed with the main girl the main character that's also kind of why I gave it a little bit of a higher score than like a two or two and a half because the main girl is beautiful and I'm obsessed with her so take with that what you will <laughs> okay next on the 25th I watched Fear Street 1978 now years ago probably when this whole thing first came out to Netflix I watched the first Fear Street the 90s one I don't know 1994 or something like that I watched that and 
it was okay. It wasn't my favorite thing, honestly. I felt like the acting was weird. I don't know. The acting was odd to me. I didn't really particularly like it or it wasn't very memorable. But for some reason, I've been really wanting to watch the second one, the 1978 one, because it has Sadie Sink in it and I love her. It's taken place in the 70s and the setting for this is a camp. It's summer. So I was like, okay, this seems like something I would like. Summer camp, slasher, Sadie Sink, 70s. Okay, I'm here for it. So I watched it and I loved it. It was exactly what I thought it would be and I loved it so much. I think the whole lore that they will have because this is a trilogy and there is like a continuation from the first movie that takes place in the next one like she's just telling a story basically future Sadie Sink is telling the story of this summer of 1978 so there is still the people from the first movie in it just like sitting and like listening to the story there's not a lot of that though it's really only the beginning and the end but this is good I mean the lore got explained so much more in this one and I think it's gonna be completely explained in the last part of the trilogy the 1666 one I just don't like that time period I don't want to watch movies in that time period it kind of is like giving me the witch vibes and I did not like that movie I want to put it off I think out of all three the 1978 one is the highest rated and I think that there's rumors or talks of there being a part four getting added soon so part of me is like maybe I should just watch it in case they do actually make a fourth one I don't know I'm kind of content just watching this 78 one because it was so good the vibes great the acting great the music great it was awesome. I loved it. I gave this four stars and a heart. This was fantastic. Unfortunately though, <laughs> that same day, right after, I watched Choose or Die and I gave this two stars. Now this one, I think I was also in a vibe because I really wanted to watch Saw, the newest one. For Saw, the whole premise is like, oh, let's play a game and he's an evil game maker, whatever. So I was kind of interested in game aspect movies you know I heard cube is a really good one this one shoes or die I didn't hear it was good but I just saw it on Netflix you know it was already on Netflix just watch fear street choose or die suggested to me and it was like a game an old retro like 80s game or whatever but the decisions you actually make are actually real and I thought it was cool that they had a voice cameo from Robert Englund the Freddy Krueger man so this one was just weird i mean this one too i was like the ending just does not make sense it just really doesn't so that was disappointing again it could have been really cool but it was more confusing than anything um i gave this like i said two stars because the concept was there the idea was there and it was disturbing and like gross at times which was cool but the ending was like wait who are you and why are we here why do my decisions affect you and i don't know you just have to watch it in order to realize it or don't watch it because it's not really that good of a movie i fully support you not watching this all right so on the 27th i watched P2. Now this is also a movie I found out from Possessed by Horror and she said that this is a great, this is like a Christmas movie so I kind of maybe missed my shot to watch it in the Christmas time but who cares it wasn't even that Christmas-y but I thought this was a pretty good movie. Like this is a kind of movie I'd watch that's on TV like they're playing like a rerun of it on TV. It's daytime and I'm sitting with my mom because I used to do that. We used to watch like kind of thriller movies movies like that it's a little gory then you know maybe I would watch with my mom but if they censored it for tv I would watch this with my parents you know this is a good like little thriller movie I, I mean I'm not gonna say family friendly but don't show this to your kids you know I thought that it was very creepy the guy was like too good at being creepy killer guy was like really good at being creepy and it was kind of concerning and there was a lot of this movie that felt super long like at a certain point I was kind of just waiting for I mean I don't know how long this movie is let's see this movie is 98 minutes did not feel that way it felt long it felt like a long movie because she gets so close so many times to escaping or defeating this guy and she misses it just by a hair and it's so 
frustrating honestly i was getting very frustrated i was like how long is this movie she's still running away from this guy and this guy keeps winning like he keeps winning and it was just so frustrating damn it just took forever it felt like that that part felt really long it wasn't my favorite thing but it's a pretty good decent slasher movie i'd probably recommend this to a couple people okay next i was kind of more in a thriller y mood than like pure horror so i watched fear and this was suggested on like Tubi or something. I mean, that's how I watched P2. This is on Tubi. And I was like, sure, why not? I love young Reese Witherspoon so much. She's so cute and I'm just She's so cute and she's such a good actress. I mean, sorry, I like Reese Witherspoon. Sue me. I also did not know that Mark Wahlberg was in this as well. This movie was just kind of off the walls. Again, I feel like this is a movie, you know, if it was a little censored for TV, this is a movie I probably watch with my mom in the daytime on a Sunday afternoon. It's a very typical 90s thriller movie of like, oh, this guy's a stalker and she's gotta fight her way out of this, whatever. This movie, I will say, felt really, like a dad wrote this and he wanted to write a movie about a dad being the hero because Reese Witherspoon doesn't really do too much to get away from this guy and it's all the dad trying to kick the stalker guy's ass and I was like this really feels like a guy who wrote this just because he's like fathers are great and fantastic and protect their daughters which is all cute and dandy but it was kind of just very obvious at certain points because the way the dad would talk or the way that they would talk about their dad or whatever. With that said and done, there was twists and turns. I gave this four stars. I really liked this movie. And young Mark Wahlberg. That's all I'll say about that. Okay, and then the last movie that I watched in February was Palo Alto. This is a movie with kind of a decent cast. We have Emma Roberts and James Franco in this movie. And... I think I'm not the biggest fan of these indie or like independent films because this was kind of boring to me. I guess it just really depends because there's not really, again, a plot for this one. There's not a lot of plot for any like indie movies. A lot of it's just like coming of age. I'm just trying to get through high school. But again, there was a character. I'm telling you, if there's one character that's insufferable, it makes your whole movie bad. There was one character in this movie that was insufferable and just such a dick and he was so mean all the time and it never he never got any better this it made this movie like unbearable every time this man would come on screen i'd be like oh my god now we have to endure another scene with this guy like it was too much honestly it was too much i gave this three stars because some parts were good some parts Pretty much all the parts without that guy that I'm talking about that's very annoying were good. But him alone knocked it down like two stars. And the kind of lack of plot and that guy and that guy got character progression and he ended up not being an asshole in the end that would be hot and sexy but that didn't happen also this is just like a me thing there was so much smoking weed okay i get that they're high schoolers and that's probably just their thing i don't know high schoolers probably smoke a lot of weed i don't know it was just kind of lame i don't know it gave off lame vibes which i'm like they're in high school maybe that's a me thing i'm like you're lame and they're high schoolers again maybe that's just me I don't know. But that's gonna be the end of this video. Those are all of the movies I watched in January and February. You know, aside from the movies I watched for movie reactions, I excluded those. I try not to upload those onto Letterboxd unless it's like I have a very strong opinion about them and I need the public to know as soon as possible my opinion. I just wanna give a quick shout out to all my patrons and especially to Mark Sylvester and James Cox. Thank you so much and make sure to go ahead and check out my patreon if you haven't already link for that will be in the description below thank you guys for coming along with me on this journey and hearing me talk about these movies i think i'm gonna do more videos like this i think this is really fun and it holds me accountable for at least watching more movies outside of the movie reaction realm what are some of your favorite movies that you watched in the month of january or february or least favorite whatever you want to talk about let me know thank you for coming along with me on this journey and make sure to like comment subscribe do all of that jazz and as always thanks for watching